So I just got back from the Pokemon International Championships in Europe and I was mind blown. This event looked so beautiful. Everything was so well done. It honestly made me a bit bittersweet because I felt like, wow, maybe not everything here could be done by Konami for Yu-Gi-Oh. Maybe they don't have the same budget, but still they're a company doing billions of dollars in revenue every single year. So. I don't know, it felt like they could do more, you know? There's a couple things, a couple things that Yu-Gi-Oh! could do to improve and feel way more amazing when it comes to their event. So that is what I wanted to talk about today. How could Yu-Gi-Oh! actually learn from Pokemon when it comes to their tournaments? Now, of course, I know here in Europe, we don't really have major tournaments right now. Hee hee ha ha, we've spoken about this before. We don't have any YCSs, it seems. I hope they come back by fall, given that I have already attend the two European championships, I can assume that they will not look like a Pokemon I see. And so let's just talk about everything here. But before that, I do want to talk about the things that Yu-Gi-Oh, in my opinion, does better than Pokemon. Because I don't want this video to just be blind hate, you know. There's a couple things that Yu-Gi-Oh does better and let's just address those first as well. First of all, there's the amount of open slots for people to register. Now, of course, Pokemon has way more people actually trying to enter their event because there is different games like there's Pokemon Go, there's VGC, there's TCG, there's Unite and so when you want to fit 4,000 people or whatever in a venue and you have to divide it across all of these games whereas in Yu-Gi-Oh it's only Yu-Gi-Oh that's a bit easier. So naturally Pokemon events sell out instantly. I was very lucky that when the timer started I could instantly go click and I'm in and so I actually got my registration but there's a lot of people including I think the VGC world champion that just didn't get in which is ridiculous to think about whereas Yu-Gi-Oh you know the YCS is announced usually you have a couple days maybe a couple weeks even to get your registration in but I do think that not having enough spots because you have too many games is not a real excuse you should be able to just book even bigger venues or even more rooms in those venues to make up for that. You shouldn't just go oopsie daisy we didn't have a big enough venue now a bunch of people aren't allowed to play haha <laughs> that's like bad and so in my opinion Yu-Gi-Oh overall does that better than Pokemon. Their venues are generally big enough for the amounts of players they expect if we had events. Second the site where you sign up for these events is called rk9.gg and overall this looks a lot like an unofficial website like you go there and you're like wow am I about to enter a malware downloader? Am I about to get scammed here? This looks pretty sketch. This is also the place where you submit your teams in VGC or your deck lists for Pokemon. And, and that whole vibe just looks a little off. Whereas in Yu-Gi-Oh! we do have the Neuron app, which is overall pretty beautiful. You know, you make your deck list and making decks on Neuron, really pretty, really cool experience. You just drag your cards. You could say it could be improved, sure. But overall, registering for a Yu-Gi-Oh! big event in Neuron feels like a real Yu-Gi-Oh! Yu-Gi-Oh! experience. Whereas Arcanine, I don't know, not so much. So this is definitely something that Yu-Gi-Oh! does better. Now from what I've seen when I went to YCS Pasadena in America, back then we didn't use Neuron and we also used a sketchy looking site. Like the official Yu-Gi-Oh! one, sure, but it was still really weird to submit a deck list that way. So I don't know if Americans actually still have the shittier experience or if they already swapped to Neuron, but at least here in Europe when we had YCSs it was through Neuron and that is definitely way better in my opinion than the whole Arcanine thing Pokemon has going on. And the third thing that Yu-Gi-Oh does better in my opinion than Pokemon is side event pricing which is funny because main event pricing <laughs> let's get to that later but side event pricing for Yu-Gi-Oh is really nice in American YCSs we have seen stuff like uncut sheets or maybe that was the nationals but so these beautiful like uncut sheets from sets that had just released you could win like a really big side event and get that and that is exclusive you could not get that anywhere else it is super hype to win something like that there's also always like these giant or over sized cards which is again something exclusive you can only get them at such types of events so people are trying for them people are grinding people are super excited to win them again like this Testina one I got in YCS Dortmund and it was a really cool experience so that the fact that you have exclusive prizes is also something pretty specific to Yu-Gi-Oh like in Pokemon yeah they had a prize wall for your side event but all of that merch was just Pokemon Center merch you could get anywhere else and while the Yu-Gi-Oh prize wall does have stuff like that as well which is great you know you want something for everyone 
everyone. The option for exclusive stuff for if you do really well at these sites is really nice. And again, that seems to be, from my experience, Yu-Gi-Oh specific. So they do that very well as well. And that is basically it. <laughs> it's not a very long list, but it is a list. I just want to be completely objective here. Those three things are pretty important to me. And so I did want to mention them. Now, in what ways should Yu-Gi-Oh learn from Pokemon? <laughs> Presentation. Presentation. Now, it's not necessarily the most important when you only care about I go in, I play my game, I win and I go back home. But it is very important from a PR perspective looking in, seeing the franchise, seeing the IP, seeing that do well and be exciting and beautiful, that creates experiences that people want to be part of. And this is something where Pokemon hands down destroys everyone else and it's not even close. When I arrived there, you instantly had like these flags hanging from the ceilings. You had flags also outside with Pokemon on them. You had these like screens outside, like this big light arc thing. I don't know if I have footage of everything, but like you walk into the venue or even next to the venue and you think, whoa, there's Pokemon stuff going on here. You can't not see that there's Pokemon stuff going on here. You walk into the venue and you see these Pokemon decals on the stairs, on the walls, you have these massive posters. There's nowhere you can look that doesn't have the franchise screaming at you that you are now a part of it. And that is so exciting. In Yu-Gi-Oh! you go to an event and sure there will be like one banner here while walking through it or maybe like one of these OTS style banners without it saying OTS but it's just so much smaller at such a smaller scale and I'll be mentioning some things that are not budget friendly later in this video but this stuff is pretty budget friendly. A sticker to put on stairs won't run you that much, but it will absolutely heighten your experience. Now, speaking of things that aren't as budget friendly, of course, you have the giant inflatable Pikachu just floating in the middle of the venue, which of course screams, wow, you're in Pokemon land now and you can't get out. That is also really exciting. Now, of course, I understand this is harder to do because that is something you have to make custom. Like I can imagine making a inflatable blue eyes white dragon is very expensive and it's something you can only use for a couple of events a year if you can even fly it out I understand but again sorry Pokemon has us beat there it is just really fucking cool to see that thing hanging there does it objectively improve your experience in just playing no but again it just it builds that IP then you have these giant banners hanging from the ceiling again it is increasing the value of the brand and this is not as expensive you know I, I can understand the giant blue eyes being too much but the giant banners really? I don't know. I think that's just worth it. Then of course you have the classic, the mascots in costumes. Do I as a grown adult need that? No. But again, you're heightening the experience. And what's also really important, but we'll get to that later, is because you have stuff like that, it is easier for families to go as a whole. Again, there's a bunch of other stuff you also need to do to make sure that people actually want to be there. Because let's be honest, there is not a child in America that currently wants to say, mommy, mommy, let's go to a YCS. You will also have a decent time. Fuck no, your mom will have an awful time unless she plays Yu-Gi-Oh herself. And even then, will she have have a great time I don't know about that but again more on that later but so all those things building those mascots this and that really adds to the experience as well should we have a person in a Karibo costume maybe should we have a rescue rabbit costume or a dark magician blue eyes white dragon I don't fucking know but do something now the final thing for presentation and probably the most important this is actually also something that made a tweet of mine go viral about this very topic the stage the stage at the international championship for Pokemon is absolutely batshit insane and makes every other card game look ridiculous. Now you could say the stage is very expensive and a Pokemon regional does not have such stage either. You know, which means the equivalent, which would be, I guess, a YCS shouldn't have such stage either. However, we have American Nat and we have European Championship. We have Latin American Nat. We have Oceania, I guess, but that's not that big because you don't have enough people. But so if that's the equivalent of an IC, there's should be an argument that our stages should be 
nicer, maybe not that level. You could say, oh, but a budget, a budget, a budget. But here's the most important thing to remember. Konami themselves have said that they wanted Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel to become like an eSport. They are basically saying we want our franchise to enter the world of eSports because there's a future there. So then naturally you should expect that you will have to invest into it like an eSport. And Pokemon is doing that. Those stages are esports level wow production. Yu-Gi-Oh! currently doesn't. We have great casters, absolutely, like Lampy and the gang, they are great casters, Farfa, great casters, but they need the infrastructure around them to make their job as casters easier so that they can actually entertain people at those high levels required to make Yu-Gi-Oh! actually also that esports level entertainment. Do we have the same budget as Pokemon? Maybe not, but Konami still, it's making billions. There are no excuses. We shouldn't be licking the corporate boot just because they maybe aren't big enough to do better. They, they are. They are big enough to do better. Not as good maybe. Now second, we have the visitor experience. And this is what I've kind of alluded to before about the whole, you know, will your mom have fun at a YCS? Probably not. Basically, when you go to this international championship, you don't necessarily have to be a player to have a good time. And even as a player, you have a better time because the visitor experience is quite good. You can bring your girlfriend or your boyfriend if your boyfriend isn't in Yu-Gi-Oh and you are or your mom or your cousin you, you can bring people and they will actually have things to do that aren't the game itself but still get them tied to the franchise get them spending money in the franchise and come away from this weekend going hey I had a good time they might even tell their friends, which is something you want for your game to grow. The first example of this is the Pokemon Center pop-up store. So specifically in EUIC, they had a temporary Pokemon Center and you can buy merchandise. So not only are you actually turning more revenue at your event because you're just selling way more merch to people who wouldn't otherwise, you know, they, they wouldn't come if there wasn't some experience to go there. They're not actual gamers, they just want to be there. And then the gamers themselves they are also spending more because they want to, because they love the franchise already. So they're already easy customers. Imagine if you had some type of Yu-Gi-Oh store with exclusive merch. I can show that actually, let me grab that. Like you have a notepad like this. This was specifically for international championships. You had like these sleeves specifically for international championship. You had this deck box specifically for international championship. I bought these for a friends, by the way. I, I don't actually play Pokemon, so I can't do anything with these. But so you have people who already love your game spending way more money on your game because it's exclusive, it's exciting, it's wow. And then you have people who just love your franchise aren't playing your game also spending money there's only wins here you could literally print exclusive Yu-Gi-Oh merch and then also just bring some of those Japan fancy merch and whatever the hell make some kind of pop-up Yu-Gi-Oh store whatever and just sell it to people and you've improved your event already second there's non-game activities now this is again something not for us who play when I go to a Yu-Gi-Oh tournament I just want to play Yu-Gi-Oh that's fine but there's other people who might be going who want to do these other activities you had people getting their face painted we don't necessarily need that but little kids have fun with that arts and crafts again maybe someone who's bringing you to this event who, or who's traveling with you or maybe someone who normally wouldn't go but now wants to because there's all of this other stuff you can do again they have something to do fucking tatsugiri fishing and then a bunch of other things all still within the franchise so you're still tying more people to your franchise these people might then buy your other merch which you're selling at that pokemon center but also in other places in the world. You're tying them to the franchise with these other activities. You're giving them a good time, way better visitor experience that has nothing to do with the actual game. And then finally, number three in visitor experience, and this is kind of tying it together, they have the battle lab. The battle lab is a place where you can learn to play the game if you don't play the game already. So you have just lured them into the Pokemon Center and they had a great time and they love the franchise. And there were other activities if they wanted that. And there were all these fucking lights blasting from the stage and the inflatable Pikachu and the beautiful banners and the decals and all of this stuff. Overall, beautiful, beautiful, whoa. And now you go, hey, you love all of this stuff. Want to learn? Better yet, if you learn here's a free lanyard with a vaporeon or whatever and if you want to learn the tcg 
Here's a free pin with a Vaporeon or whatever, just for your trouble. You wanna learn? Come. And they have this beautiful battle app where you can just get started playing the game. And now you went from a normie into a potential player, just like that. And this is great for kids. This is great for friends who just, you know, happen to come with you or pass by or spectate or whatever. You have created a perfect funnel to get more people in. That's again, super fucking genius. Now I will say some YCSs have had like these master dual stations types of deals and those could in theory be used like that, but I've not seen it actually be used like that. And again, all the other infrastructure isn't built to actually get non-players wanting to be at these events anyway, so they aren't used like that. But technically they could be. And again, those Master Duel Stations cool, but currently they're barely used. Like technically they are for side events. I don't know if a Master Duel side event has ever launched. <laughs> again, visitor experience just top notch. Next, the spectator experience. The first thing of course, again, the beautiful stage. Like that thing is insane, so you just feel like you're part of something way bigger when you're watching. You are actually excited. I was watching the finals of Tord versus the other guy, both, you know, incredible players, but I actually in that moment suddenly gave a damn about the Pokemon TCG because it's just like this beautiful wow thing, you're part of a huge experience. Even though I don't really care much about Pokemon TCG, I don't like the game that much, but you're part of something way bigger, insane production, and just like that, you're hooked. Not that I will play though, you know, I like the Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG. Next up, beautiful set design for commentators. You know, this isn't just a gray table with a logo behind commentators just talking. This is actual beautiful couches with beautiful things around them and then a bunch of Pokemon merch. So yeah, you are being told, look how big this franchise is and you could buy all this stuff right now here at this Pokemon Center even or at home at PokemonCenter.com or whatever. You're constantly being told, look at the franchise, Look at the franchise, look at the franchise, look how big it is and you can be part of it and spend fucking money. It is gorgeous. And again, Yu-Gi-Oh has great casters. Lampy, Farfa and so many others. Sorry, I'm blanking on it. Such good casters, but just the infrastructure around them isn't there. And in Pokemon it is, just this, it's beautiful. And then finally, kind of a smaller one, but there's plenty of seating. So at this stage, I never felt like, damn, I don't have a seat. Could there be more seating? Sure. But when I was at, for example, YCS Bologna, you have this stage where it is a bit smaller, a little bit of a production thing around that, but then you tend to not really have enough seats. I think I've once seen a YCS finals seated and all the other times I've had to stand, which is really fucking annoying because Yu-Gi-Oh takes a long time. So like 45 minutes of just standing there and your legs are hurting and it's been a long weekend and you would just like to sit and watch and be at least excited by a good game of good players with good commentators. Like small thing, I understand, but I still wanted to mention it. For the player experience, you could argue that it is the most important one, right? You could argue that all of the stuff I just mentioned is just fluff that when you go to a tournament you just want to compete and you'd be somewhat right but the problem is you're not <laughs> it's just, it's not true. In theory, we could all remote duel. In theory, we could just boot up Discord and play against each other, play YCS is just against each other from the comfort of our room. And technically, you would have the exact same experience as at a real event if you were able to ignore the lack of experience. If it was truly just about the game, you could do that. You could even boot up Dueling Book and just play against people that way. It's the same experience. In theory, you're playing your games round 1 through 11. That's fucking it, right? But we're human beings. <laughs> So just like the black on white experience of putting the cards down isn't all that matters. And so let's talk about player experience here, even though all these other experiences are also just crucial. First of all, the entry package is insane. If you don't know, you pay for an IC, it, I think it was 70 or 80 pounds. So I think it's about a hundred-ish dollar, which is more than a YCS. Um, I think last YCS I spent 45 or 50 euros, 55-ish dollars. So uh, almost double, right? And what do you get in Yu-Gi-Oh? You get a coin and you get a couple packs. Now these packs, whether or not those packs are going to be in English, in Europe is a big question, which is already pretty sus. You know, in YCS Bologna, it was like, oh, sorry, you ran out of English. Here's your German packs. Here's your fr French packs. Okay, what am I supposed to do with these, <laughs> you know? And then more importantly, since there are packs, I already have the cards. I wouldn't be at this YCS if I didn't have the current cards. In theory, if you go to a YCS, you have all the cards you need. Why? Because deck registration was the day before. You have your deck with up-to-date 
eight cards. So these entry packs are meaningless. So that's your entry, okay? I do like the coins though. Coins, really nice touch. But packs, I, I don't give a fuck about packs. This is just bulk. And then more importantly, because they're packs, what you get out of that entry is kind of just random, right? Sometimes you'll pull a good card and sometimes you'll pull dog shit and you'll just have, you know, spent the money on, on your tournament and have gotten nothing in return, which is fine, of course, if you only care about the tournament. You ignore everything else around it. Now the entry for Pokemon, and remember you did pay double as much, is really spectacular. So first of all, you have a beautiful playmat. I'll try and put it up here. It's a very pretty thing. Do you care about playmats? I don't know. But you also get this deck box. It's also pretty cool. You get this promo card of a playable card with like a stamp and it's foil, it's exclusive. I was told it would be like 20 to 30 bucks in like the near future. Cool. Okay, so you're already kind of starting to make your money back. You also have like these sleeves, which are pretty cool. Also have this pin. We could kind of, I guess, compare this to the coins. Of course, the coins, we have different ones and some are silver and some are gold. So it's kind of fancy, but sure, like in terms of like material cost, I guess it would be comparable to coin, but you have like a cool pin specifically exclusive for that tournament. You also get this lanyard, which is like your, your pass, I guess, for entry. Then this lanyard you can use for other stuff. And what's interesting, because this isn't random and because a lot of people who can't necessarily go to those events still want that stuff because this is useful. These are sleeve. They pay for this. You can sell your goodie bag for so much, you've basically not even spent anything on it. In Yu-Gi-Oh, you could do the same sometimes if you pull well, if it was in your language, if it was not outdated as hell support, if you maybe got the golden coin instead of the silver one, but those are all ifs, 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 ifs. The goodie bag is just in a completely different level. But that's a detail, right? Let's now get to the second part of player experience, and that is pricing. Now, this could be an entire video on its own, but let's be real, pricing in Yu-Gi-Oh is limited. You go to a YCS, there's 2,500 players there. You somehow get top 32 and then you got unlucky. All right, what do you get? A playmat. If you top in Pokemon, you get like $2,000. You get further, it's $5,000. And this and that, and you get first, you get $25,000 or something. Now, I will say, I do not think that monetary pricing is necessary per se, but there does have to be something. Something that's exciting, something that's exclusive, something that makes you go, wow, I really want something special here. And some could argue that that's still limited. Now, I don't really want to go too in-depth on pricing here because that is, again, a completely different discussion. But Pokemon does do that better. Like, just better. I don't think anyone will argue it. I don't think anyone on planet Earth will go, actually, Yu-Gi-Oh! pricing is better than Pokemon. It's just not true. But that is it, actually, from player experience. Note how it's limited, this section. Because I think overall, Konami actually does a really good job when it comes to specifically player experience. You go to a YCS and your rounds, assuming you don't wait an hour between every round. Actually, I should mention that. I just thought of that. I was thinking player experience is pretty good. And then I was thinking of all the YCSs where the timer between rounds ran up to like an hour and a half. That didn't happen in Pokemon. <laughs> I don't know if that's specific. I only went to one event, but yeah, maybe, maybe not. Maybe we have one more point. Time between rounds, yikes. But so overall, let's forget about time between rounds for a second. Player experience is actually pretty good for Yu-Gi-Oh. It's just that everything else around it, which as I've said before, is still important if you're not a robot who only cares specifically about the game you're playing right now and nothing else, is just on a totally different level and I think Konami can absolutely step it up if you just pretend to care. That is all. Hope you found this interesting. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe and I will see you.